spend a lot of time ruminating on lots of questions during our days sheltered at home. The loop in my head has had mostly to do with when will we go back to normal and what will normal look like along with a lot of what ifs. But in the past few days and reflecting on St. Anselm, whose feast day was yesterday, I realized I'm of course focusing too much on the wrong questions. Anselm was born in Italy in the 11th century and though he wanted to enter the monastery as a teenager, his dad opposed that. He gave up on religion altogether for a bit and instead dedicated himself to more worldly pursuits, aimlessly traveling around France for several years. Thanks be to God that his call to religious life finally went out, and Anselm entered this monastery in his late twenties. He was much loved by his brothers at the Abbey of Beck in Normandy, where he strengthened the monastery's reputation as an intellectual center. At the age of 60, and against his will, he was called to serve as Archbishop of Canterbury under King William Rufus, who was both corrupt and ruthless. Anselm's time as bishop was rough, but nevertheless, and very thankfully for us, he maintained his intense focus on the right questions. Questions of who God is, of who and whose we are, and of how and where God is working around us all the time. Anselm is best known for his theological writings, teasing out a famous argument for the existence of God, the so-called ontological argument, and for the satisfaction theory of atonement, explaining the work of Jesus on the cross in terms of the feudal system of his day. And while those insights are incredibly important to theology in general, I think much more important is the method through which Anselm arrived at his understanding of God. It seems he was always asking the right questions. Again, who God is, who Anselm himself was in light of God, and how and where God was working in the world. Anselm's biography in Lesser Feast and Fast, the Episcopal Church's Guide to Feast Days, says that undergirding Anselm's theology is a profound piety. His spirituality is best summarized in the phrase, faith-seeking understanding. Anselm writes, I do not seek to understand that I may believe, but I believe in order that I may understand. For this, too, I believe, that unless I first believe, I shall not understand. Anselm asks questions that help him better understand and so better love the one who so loves us, to draw him into closer relationship with God, into closer relationship with the one who seeks deep and abiding relationship with each of us. All of Anselm's work comes out of asking, meditating, praying on questions driven by understanding who God is, and who we are as God's beloved. His is a good example for me and for all of us at all times, but especially in times when nothing around us seems to make much sense. I close by offering these words born out of Anselm's meditation, a song of Christ's goodness. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride, Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. 
Through your gentleness we find comfort and fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy heal us. In your love and tenderness remake us. In your compassion bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven may your love prepare us. Amen. His word shall not fail you, he promised.